Well, welcome this evening. Thank you for being here. Um, we always really enjoy this part because it, uh, it's the part that enables us to draw some recognition to individuals that have, have made a significant difference uh, in the course of the organization through the year. But we have a special treat this year. Uh, I don't need to do a lengthy introduction. It's someone you know well. Um, and someone that we will hear from tomorrow and who we've heard from in the past. But it is our pleasure to welcome Under Secretary Ibach to the podium just to provide us some words of welcome. And we certainly appreciate having you here the, to be with us this evening. Thank you. So I really don't need to take up a bunch of time tonight. Uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh, my, uh, being able to uh, visit with uh, you one-on-one -on -one throughout the evening here, as well as uh, share some thoughts with you in the morning. I do think, though, that um, you know, uh, organizations uh, in our industry that make differences over time are very dependent on volunteers and people that are in jobs that are willing to come and spend some time uh, serving the industry as well. And so tonight is a great opportunity for you guys to celebrate the volunteerism as well as the dedication that uh, some of your members will be recognized uh, for tonight. And so I think that we should never uh, discount uh, the sacrifices that people make to be able to do the, make those contributions. You know, they uh, leave they leave family, they leave uh, kids' activities, and uh, they leave. Uh, uh, work responsibilities or have to make them up over time or on weekends to be able to participate in in uh, things that better our industry as a whole and so I think we should always be appreciative of that and make sure you say thank you to them after they're recognized tonight and uh, and with that uh, I think it should also inspire us to uh, see the model that they have set and uh, and uh, try to do our part uh, to uh, live up to the example they've set and take time out of our schedules to fill their shoes after we thank them for the time they've spent with us. So thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Appreciate that. Katie, are we ready? Okay. First item of business. Um, I, one that I've heard numerous comments about today. I, um, it just seems like everywhere I go, uh, everyone really very much enjoyed this morning. And as I mentioned earlier, that, that job of uh, being on the annual conference planning committee is no easy task. And, and this year um, really took an, an extra amount of work. And, and um, so I'm going to ask uh, the, these six members to please come forward. Um, and, and please stay up here so we can get your picture uh, with all of you. Um, so, first of all, Miss Chelsea Good. Bravo, bravo. You can hold she, call, yeah, call yeah we'll, we'll just do, okay. Uh, I know she's here, I've seen her. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Okay, Mr. Kevin Mayer, please come forward. Mr. Dave McElhaney. I just said, uh, there he is. Mr. Todd Lowe. I think I saw him. Dr. Lucas Pantaleon. Come on up, Lucas. And Dr. Rick Sybil. He's here, I saw him. He's in the back somewhere, maybe. Okay, great session this morning. We look forward to a great session this afternoon. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. We have just a, an item of recognition. Neither one of them are here uh, with us this week, but we do have two retiring board members. 
Uh, first of all is Dr. Kent Fowler, and the second is Dr. Hector Cervantes, um, and both of whom uh, I believe Hector has served for five years and uh, Kent served for three years. So please give them a round of applause and, and uh, show your appreciation. Okay, next is probably one of my favorites. It's the, it's the Advocate for Animal Agriculture Award. And, and um, you know, it's presented to an individual uh, who's an outstanding advocate and communicator for animal agriculture. Well, this was an easy one for us this year because we've had an individual who um, I, w I would describe, it's never about what they do. It's always who they are, right? Um, and I, I just wrote down a couple of, of, of terms that, that come to mind as I think about this individual. Uh, a yeoman, steady, hardworking, uh, respectful, always thoughtful. Um, he's been described as having the gift of service and leadership. He's a servant leader. And those aren't always easy things to, to put together. Um, he's an individual who jumped in with us with the Cattle Traceability Working Group, continues to provide great direction for us, uh, and most importantly is always the voice of the producer. And um, that's just really key to who we are and what we want to do. And as we talked about our mission earlier, um, and I'm just going to tell you a real quick story. He knows this, but uh, uh, I was down at uh, Square B Angus Ranch just a couple of weeks ago. And um, I was with Brian Bell. And, and Brian and Joe met one another last fall in Kansas City. And... Um, Joe invited Brian down to the Four Sixes Ranch, and Brian took him up on it. And I was down there and, and spent a day with Brian, and, and Brian just kept talking about how gracious Joe was and how much he enjoyed that and what an honor and a treat and a privilege that was for him, not just to visit your ranch, but because of who you are. And this year's Advocate for Animal Agriculture, the award goes to Mr. Joe Leathers. Please give him a round of applause. hear some common themes this evening um, as, as we go through some of these individuals, but um, next in line is the President's Award, and, and um, you know, we talked a little bit about college basketball this morning, and, and I'm an avid fan, and, and uh, we are, my wife and I are avid followers of Western Kentucky University basketball, and we, our head basketball coach there, men's basketball coach, is a guy named Rick Stansberry. And, you know, when you're around coaches a lot and you listen to them, they, they have phrases that they use a lot. And he likes to talk about his players and whether they get to play is if they add to. Okay? You can get, to, you add to. And it doesn't really matter that you're a big scorer, but if you can come off the bench, do your part, maybe play great defense, but always be heads up and somehow add to the team and even buy some minutes you're going to get to play. So there's an individual in, in this room that um, just uh, is one of those always going to add to. There's, it's never, there's never a distraction. There's never a cost. Um, I, I wrote down some things as, as we talk about this. Is, is never distracted. Always anticipating what's, what's coming next. What is it that you want? Those of you that are grain farmers know that, boy, you always appreciate when the grain truck's at the right place because you're, you're thinking about where the combine's going to go. Um, again, that same theme. Always serving, thinking of others, pleasure to work with. And um, again, I wrote down some things here. Open-minded, consistent, diligent, capable, great work ethic. Never any drama and always nice. Now, I don't know how many of you have hired people in the past, or most of you probably work on a team, 
you know how hard it is to find good people for your team. And uh, when you get those right people, you really, really appreciate them. Um, I categorize this person as an incredible difference maker. And I always like to tell her, I say, Angela, you're a champion. So Angela Luongo, President's Award. Congratulations, you are definitely making a difference. to the Chairman's Award. You know, you know when I, uh, I, just, I did a presentation last Friday, and I, I, whenever I go and do a presentation, I like to talk about the principle of Jim Collins in his very first book, Built to Last. And, and, and he talks about that companies and entities, and I think it ultimately applies to us as individuals. It's the principle of being able to preserve the core but stimulate progress, right? And we always want to preserve the very core principles of, of who we are and what we are, but then stimulate progress because things are going to change and you have to adapt and you have to be willing to do that. And, and that's true for organizations and businesses and that's true for many of us over our careers. And, and if you can't do that, then you really can't provide meaningful leadership. Um, and leadership is really a theme of this evening. That's really what it's, what it's all about. Um, I have uh, come to discover that this individual is really a very, very valuable sounding board. Always just uh, appreciate the fact that um, he can be decisive and being able to be highly capable of making tough decisions, just making the call. But it can also be thoughtful, right? Understanding all of the complexities that are going on, and then once he's thought through those, again, being able to just make a decision and let's do it, let's get it done, and ultimately I hear him in my head always, let's just do what's right. Um, that's been the key to his success over his career. I could go through a, a long laundry list of the things that he's done and the things that he's accomplished, but again, this is as much about who you are. And all those things are a result of that. But I will just give you a couple of keys here. Uh, this person won the Advocate for Animal Agriculture in 2015 here in NIAA. Most recently, he was named Friends of the Pork Industry in the state of Ohio. And also uh, received the Certificate of Appreciation for Exceptional Service from the Ohio, the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. None of those are any surprise to us. Tony, Dr. Tony Forshee, we thank you for your service. You are the recipient of this year's Chairman Award. For our Meritorious Service Award, I would like to call up some, to the podium someone we all know very well. We're fortunate to have him with us this year, Mr. Scott Stewart. Thank you, Neville. It's uh, very much a pleasure to be asked to make this next presentation. Louder, you say? All right. Can you hear me all right, Rick? You know, the Meritorious Service Award is, is the highest award that this organization gives, and it's really something that looks at an individual and the contributions not only to the organization, but to animal agriculture uh, as a whole. 
And this year's recipient, I think you'll see, is, a, is kind of a surprise. And it's, it's very much an honor for me to make the presentation. Just to uh, remind those of you that may have not been here, we have a string of Meritorious Service Award winners that are just a who's who, truly, in, in animal, ag animal agriculture. 2015, Dr. Jim McKean, who sadly is no longer with us, uh, with Iowa State. Dr. John Clifford, of course, with uh, USDA VS. Mr. Neil Hammerschmidt, Mr. Animal ID, that uh, uh, retired last year, I believe it was, Katie, isn't that right? And then last year they ran out of candidates, and so they, they chose me. But truly an honor, because it's, it's something that this organization, all of these individuals, meant uh, it means a lot to them and, and, and certainly uh, they've given quite a bit. This year's award winner I've had the pleasure of knowing for quite a few years and I think that the only person in the room that will understand the first clue is, is that particular person because I think the rest of you will be surprised with the background that I'm about to, to share with you. This year's uh, Meritorious Service Award winner actually went to the University of Arizona in Tucson, received a bachelor's degree in accounting and a master's in economics. And I bet there's nobody in here that could guess who it is, except one man. After graduation, then he spent a few years in public accounting, found that boring, so then he jumped into the airline business and, and was owner and a manager of a, of a cargo airline for a number of years. After that, he retired and, and was looking to slow down a little bit and saw an advertisement for a job to be the chief financial officer at a little uh, livestock Marketing Co-op in Wisconsin, Equity Cooperative Livestock, and decided he might go put his name in there. That'd be something to do just to keep him, him busy. And uh, obviously he, he prospered well because in two years after that the board made him CEO, and he's been CEO for a number of years, since 2002. If you look here, this may be a little bit hard to read, but it's, I think it's worth sharing with you. Uh, he has served on many capacities with many organizations. He's been on the executive committee and past president of the Wisconsin Beef Council, executive committee of the National Livestock Producers Association, executive committee and nominating committee for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, past chairman of the NCBA's Livestock Marketing Council, a director for the U.S. Meat Export Federation, vice chairman of the Animal Ag Committee for the National Council of Farmer Cooperatives, and director on the Government Affairs Committee for NCFC. And again, this is somebody that came into this industry fairly late in life, but jumped in and not only learned the industry, but helped lead the industry for, for quite some time now. As far as his home life, uh, two grown children, one of which is uh, in Chicago, has been for a number of years a, a past player on the uh, University of Michigan football team and trades Euro dollars in the, at the CME. And, and a granddaughter, that, or excuse me, a daughter is just sharing with me that is now a proud over two Subway, I think, sandwich shops. So uh, doing very well there as well. He and his wife, Jill, live in Lodi, Wisconsin, and in his spare time, he not only enjoys playing golf, but he's pretty darn good at it as well. So, Chuck Adamy, if you'll come forward, <laughs> Chuck, you're the 2019 NIA Meritorious Service Award winner. You know, it's true that I, uh, I left agriculture. I grew up on a farm, and as many farm kids, I didn't think that I liked it. So I went out to see the world, and I spent 25 years seeing all of the world in the aviation business. I was fortunate enough to be successful, and I retired, and I came back to the agricultural industry, realizing that I probably left something that I never needed to leave. That what I saw out in the world certainly wasn't any better than what I came back to. I believe in the producers and I hope that the time that I've spent in this industry that I have represented them and I will continue to do so. I want to thank you very much for this award. It was not anticipated and I think I owe a couple of individuals a payback. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's it for this evening. Thank you again for coming. <laughs>